Hello again, after the record, we were speaking about the importance of practicing complete questions and complete scenarios, especially when the scenario in the exam is in MQ question or a long question. So you will need to be aware of what is the keywords in the scenario. Okay, some call it buzzwords, but it's okay. Because, you know, they want to give you some information that guide you through the management, right? Or guide you through the situation. And they want to help you, by the way, right? And most likely they take or um, they take some paragraph or some sentence from the guidelines. And what they will do is afterwards, they will go, you know, um, to, to create a scenario based on that. And then after that, they will, you know, give you the keywords so you will know that you are tested in this particular part in the guideline, right? And then they ask you, what is your management or what is your suggestion? And you have to, of course, answer on, um, you know, on the same evidence based at the guideline or the two article say to you, right? So by practicing the complete questions, as I told you, okay, we will be able to, you know, um, enhance our ability to do that in the exam. And your brain will is going to have, you know, like practice and practice. And again, brain is a muscle. So you have to train it every day. I found one hour, okay, to spend with you today, guys. So let's have, a, you know, a look to what is, I'm preparing for you. We're going to solve the questions on the labor module, okay, management of labor and its complication. Are you okay with that? Okay, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of the mock tests in the labor module and let's solve it together. Let's go through it together, okay? Okay, so if you have any particular preference, my friends, please let me know about it, okay? Any specific topic besides the topics that, you know, we are going to uh, discuss today, okay? Please tell me what you need to cover, okay? So at least if not covered today, it will be covered over the next few days, right? Okay, so let's start with the labor management, okay? Uh, quiz, it's a mini quiz, so let's see. Here in... A 30 year old para one attended the antenatal clinic for booking her second pregnancy at 14 weeks of gestation. She underwent uncomplicated emergency cesarean section in her last de delivery due to presenting in labor with a breech presentation at 7 cm cervical dilatation. She was to discuss her options for delivery in this pregnancy. Choose the statement that best describes the risk and benefit of VBAC versus the elective repeated cesarean section for her. So what you would suggest? Okay, my friend, so, okay, so I can see that you all agreed on one answer, which is B, okay, that the VBAC is associated with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy risk of 8 in 10,000. Is that correct? Would that be a correct information to give it to the patient?
Yes, okay, good. Okay, so let's see the question number two. Yes, usually questions based on numbers, we don't negotiate it so much. So in a gravity, one para zero admitted to the labor ward with uterine activity. At 39 plus three weeks gestation, she had a low risk pregnancy to date. She's found to be contracting three in 10. And these contractions are mild and in coordinate. Abdominal examination revealed that the fetus in the cephalic position with four to five or four fifths of the fetal head palpable per abdomen. Okay, so is that a high head, right? An initial vaginal examination reveals an effaced cervix, 6 cm dilated with intact membrane. And what is the station? A station is minus three. Repeat examination after four hours reveals no change. The next most appropriate step in the management is Well done, okay? So in the management of labor, right, as we learned from the intrapartum care, that if you have the four hourly examination, right? Between a four hour and the four hours, you find that the patient did not progress well, which is less than two CM in a four hour. Right, what you will do? In this case, you are going to discuss the amniotomy option with the lady, right? Or if she had already ruptured membrane, no need to discuss the amniotomy option, right? Both ways, what you will do? You are going to consider the amniotomy with her and re-examine her abdominal and vaginal examination after two hours, right? So. At this level, when I have four and four and the progress is not enough, what will I call this stage of delivery? Okay, so it's S and D. What is this? A suspect delay. Well done. Okay, after the two hours and amniotomy, if the patient of course agree for that, I found that the patient did not have enough progress. This is after the two hours. What will I call now? Yes, well done. This is DD and it is DD, diagnosed delay, or CD, confirmed delay. Yes, well done. Okay. So remember SD and CD, right? And this is the correct action to take. Well done, 100% correct. Okay, my friends. So let's see the question number three. Again, let's read the scenario together and see if there is any specific part we need to comment on. In 26 year old, the gravida one para zero, 40 plus five weeks of gestation present to the labor ward with regular painful contraction for the past three hours. On examination, she is contracting four in 10 and contractions are strong, okay? Dominant examination reveals that the fetus in the cephalic presentation with a fetal head three fifths palpable. Initial vaginal examination revealed an effaced cervix, which is good. 4 cm, fetal membranes intact, head minus one. No cabot, no molding. Position is not defined. At four hours later, a second examination reveals that the head remains at minus one. Cervix is still four, despite ongoing adequate contractions. What is the most appropriate management intervention? Options are given, as you can see. Okay. even if contractions are adequate, okay? Is that the step when we discuss the oxytocin or is that the step when we discuss the amniotomy? Good. 
Yes, sure, you can see the question again. Okay. And here, I'll try to bring the questions and options in the same view. All the options are there. I'm new to me and re-examine in two hours, or I'm new to me and re-examine in four hours, or go directly to civilian section, or oxytocin infusion, or oxytocin infusion. Of course, if we go through the options, we'll find and discuss from E. Okay. Oxytocin infusion, of course, is not an option. She is still at the level of suspected delay, right? Not confirmed delay yet. And the contractions are adequate. So Oxytocin is not an option here. Also, D is rejected. Caesarean mm -hmm. section, maybe after we give her a chance, right, and properly diagnose her and assess her, but not now. I don't have a reason, okay, to go for caesarean section. Plus, okay, I don't have from the examination finding any signs or symptoms of cephalopelvic disproportion. Right? So, caesarean section is reject, rejected as well. Aminutomy and re-examine up to two, four hours, or aminutomy and re-examine in two. Which one? Still, I will go at the guideline. Yes, and it will be A. Yes. Right? So, again, the case had four hourly examination. Found to be the same at after four hours. This is called SD. Suspected delay. What I need is, they said membranes are intact, okay, to discuss the immunotomy with hair and after two hours examine again. So if still the same and no progress, this is, will be a confirmed delay, right? Clear? Well done. The question number four says, a 28-year-old woman, gravida one, para zero, at 39 weeks of gestation, she presented to the labor world with regular painful contraction for the past three hours, okay? Proceeded by gush of clear fluid. Okay, this is rupture of membrane, right? Okay, it's a pre-labor rupture of membrane or SROM. On examination, she is contracting twice in 10 minutes. Abdominal examination revealed that the fetus in the cephalic position and the fetal head three-fifths palpable. Initial vaginal examination revealed a fat cervix, 4 cm dilated, head minus one, and no cupboard, no molding. Position is not defined and there is a clear fluid draining after four hours. Second examination reveals that the head remains at the station minus one and cervix is still four. The frequency of contraction increased to five in every 10 minutes for the past three minutes. Okay, so be careful my friends here, because here he is telling you that some change or some progress occur or not. Do you have any improvement in her condition or are we still at the same? Yes, it's improved, good. So, however, yes, what shall I do now? What shall I need now to do? Yes, you will need to do a reassessment in two hours again, right? You will need to do another assessment in two hours. She is gravida one para zero, my friends. What makes this question different from another question of a multigravida, okay, that have Improvement in the position of the baby, baby already rotate, baby descent, but the dilatation is the same. Contractions increase. The, the, the difference is 
that in primes, we consider delay only if the progress, or we suspect delay, only if the progress less than adequate from the dilatation, less than two in four hours, right? In multi para, there is a little bit different, okay? What is a little bit different in multi para women? The little bit different, according to the NICE guideline, that it has improvement, okay, in the finding, in the examination, like contractions increased, right? Baby descent is better now, engagement happened, okay? Maybe also rotation. So this is an example of that a progress occurred even if the dilatation was, for example, less than two in four hours. Okay, so she is primary. We have to stick to the guideline, to the equation that say every four hourly examination, I should have at least two in four, two CM in four hours. If the patient less than that, still the patient suspected delay, if the rupture of membrane occurred, then I will do nothing. And then I will examine her both abdominally and vaginally after two hours from now. Is it clear so far, my friends? Okay, that's good. Yes, it's D in this case. Everything make a difference. I'm sure that you have seen another question before with a multi-para scenario and more improvement in the descent. And the answer was, in four hours because they considered that this was a form of progress, right? Here, she is an para. She is gravid one para zero, primary in labor. We have to stick to the measurement of two in four. Clear, my friends? Okay, now move to the question, next question, and this is number five. 26 year old, the gravid two para one with a low risk of pregnancy, presents at 41 week of gestation in a spontaneous labor. She was transferred to the labor world from birth unit as she had been pushing for two hours and not yet delivered. Okay, so what is the situation? Situation awareness. I have a multi -para. She used to be low risk in this pregnancy. She presented at 41 week in a spontaneous labor. So everything goes fine, but what happened is that she is in the second stage pushing for two hours and not yet delivered. She had normal progress in labor to date and no CTG concern on arrival. Finding where vital signs normal, per abdominal examination less than one fifth palpable, and vaginal examination fully dilated, presenting part vertex at the spine, right except to posterior and cabot one plus, molding one plus. What would you? preferred line of management. Okay, so I'm so glad you answered correctly. Well done. So it's, yes, a mid cavitary. Yes, instrumental delivery, and this should be done only in theater. Well done, right? So if I have a pushing for two hours, then what shall I do now? I should do an action. What is the action required? I don't have any signs or symptoms of kephalopelvic disproportion and the case is already multipara. She is a good candidate for the instrumental delivery, but the instrumental delivery in this case should be only done in theater. So here I would choose C, well done. Question number six is a primary at 38 plus six, Admitted with history of abdominal pain and the clear fluid leaking for five hours. No other risk factors in her history. Examination, observation are normal. Pulse rate, blood pressure, temperature. She is having regular painful contractions, three in 10. Thank you, my dear friend. Thank you, Dr. Faiza. Inshallah, you will do very well in the exam. This is what we are hoping and praying for. You and all your friends. So she is having regular painful uterine contraction, three in 10, and cervical dilatation is found to be four CM. I'm all clutched and they need to continue, thank you. So 
CTG was performed due to concerns about the fetal heart rate on auscultation. CTG show now a baseline fetal heart of 140 to 150. Is that okay? Is that white or amber or red, the fetal heart? It's white, clear white, yes. No other non-reassuring or abnormal features. That means our CTG is fine, okay? So now, what is the next appropriate step in this case? Shall I continue CTG or shall I discontinue the CTG and back to the normal auscultation? What shall I do? Look, my friends, yes, this is, I think, it's somebody who had the question from a book and, you know, somebody from the editor team, and it need to be edited. Why? I'll tell you, dear friends, do we have here, yes, yes, correct. So do we have here any indication to continue CTG or auscultation? You will back to the normal care. You should be back after 20 minutes, right? To the normal care, right? Good. So I should stop the CTG after discontinue the CTG, okay? After passing a time, okay? It will be usually 20 minutes, right? And normal care, that's it. So either the question, the option C will be 100% correct if we discontinue the CTG or continue CTG for 20 minutes only, okay? And then back to the normal key, right? So there is no indication to continue the CTG in this case, she is a low risk, right? After you are now reassured by the fetal heart rate, just continue it for a time, make sure that still there is no abnormality appeared in the CTG, you are now reassured, mother reassured, continue normal care. Okay? Yes. Thank you very much. So, mashallah, you are now expert and you can detect any question that's not updated. Yeah, well done. So, 19-year-old Raimi admitted to the midwifery lead unit at 39 weeks with a spontaneous onset of labor at 5. On admission, her blood pressure 140 over 90. Bulse 92, no protein in urine, no symptoms reported of preeclampsia. She had a repeat blood pressure already. And after 30 minutes, her blood pressure was still 140 over 90. Okay. So what is the most appropriate next step of management? So if, if I have two reading already, of the 140 over 90, what shall I do according to the intrapartum care guideline? Look, my friends, I appreciate your answers, okay, that you want to um, check, okay? But is that a reason to transfer the patient? because causes or indication of transfer are very important in your question. It still comes in your exam, right? Okay, so I have a patient and already I have 
confirmed the increase in the blood pressure. And the blood pressure was mild to moderate, not severe, because if I have it severe from the first time, I should have transfer there, arranged for the transfer. Right? So once confirmed severe, go to transfer. Right, okay. So we can have a look to the indication of transfer, please, because it still comes in your exam. One second, my friends, just open my file. Plus, if she had any complication, my dears, okay, what will happen? In the midwifery unit, nobody is going to help her. Nobody will be able to help her, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's collapsing then. I'm sorry. It's an indication for transfer, guys. It's reading repeated twice, not one time only. Okay. I'm trying to open another file, but for some reason, I don't know. They ask me to log in again and again. Okay. One second, my friends. I'll do something which can be helpful. from the intrapartum care, nice guideline. Okay, for healthy women and babies, we will have the indication of transfer. Okay. Okay, I post that to the group, my friends, have a look at it, please. I'm sorry, I can't open it in my window for some reason. Okay. Right, have you received that? After your exam, this whole is changed. Okay, the guideline is changed and you will be requested if you are not planning for the January exam, okay, this guideline is already updated, but we still follow for the January, the um, 2022 version. Okay. Okay, I'll send it to you guys, okay? Okay, so dear friends, if we have severe hypertension from the indication of transfer from a midwifery late care unit to the um, obstetric late care unit where doctors, anesthetist, neonatologists are available, what are the indication of care? Any risky case, okay? If we have severe blood pressure, then no time I will arrange to transfer, of course. If I have mild to moderate increasement without severe or without, sorry, as red flag signs of preeclampsia, then the patient can wait for reconfirmation for another reading. The other reading is already occurred. So what, what shall I do now? I will contact the coordinating midwife and transfer to obstetric leg care unit now. Okay, so from what you can see here, do you think that any part is not clear about whom to contact, where to contact and all? Okay, good. 
So my friends, choose the single best answer for the following scenario. 28 year old para one, attend your clinic at 36 weeks of gestation for review. She had a cesarean section for pathological CTG at 8 CM in her last pregnancy three years ago. She is asking how she should deliver. In the previous one, it was D, my friend. D, D, it's D. Because you need to transfer her to the obstetric care unit because she had two reading of mild to moderate blood pressure, high blood pressure. He, now we are discussing question eight and the question eight is 28 year para one at the clinic 36 weeks. She had cesarean section for pathological CTG in the last pregnancy means that now we are discussing VBAC. So what information you will give her? That's easy about the success rate or what is the possibilities that she will have? Okay, what is the chances of success of that VBAC? Okay. The woman is now admitted at 40 weeks of gestation with regular uterine contraction and clear lycor draining and found to be 5 cm. So he moved five, four weeks forward in time like movies. Okay, so what would be the next step in hair management? Yes, just confirm that she wants to continue with the as planned for the VBAC. Yes, the recording will be available in the group. Two hours later from the admission, she is 9 CM. Mashallah, this is fast progress. And CTG has been reassuring. The plan is to reassess in one hour, but in terms of um, midwife looking after her, tells you that she is now complaining of constant pain across her previous scar then what you will do now? That's easy. There is pain in the previous scar, CTG variable deceleration, meconium staining, maternal tachycardia. What is your initial diagnosis? Just wait, wait. The question is about diagnosis. Very easy question. Yes, you are, yes, you try and rupture, of course. So what is the management? Yes, do we need to run any other investigation before we go actually? No, you go for cut one cesarean because there is an imminent risk to the mother and baby. Okay. Okay, this is an EMIC question, EMIC question, but on the oldest style, by the oldest style. Please, guys, have a look to this EMIC and then tell me your answer from the question one to three. Please make sure, Dr. Ahmed Mustafa, that you are muted. Thank you very much. Just for the quality of the record. Okay, so did you have your time reading? 
Okay, so for the number one in this EMQ, the point number one, we have 22 year old primary at 39 weeks and admitted to the labor room with the regular uterine activity. She was examined at 1 p.m. and found to be 5 cm dilated. Vertex 2 cm above the spine with intact membrane. She is re-examined at 5 p.m. and found to be 6 cm dilated. Vertex now 1 cm above the spine with intact membrane. So, what are you going to do at the moment? Okay, so what is the required thing here in this question? Which, which I will say that this is the leading part of the scenario, right? He wants from you to decide the single most appropriate intervention. So what intervention that you will offer here? It's the avenue to me. Okay, so how about two? The case number two says 39 years old, para one, admitted to labor room in a spontaneous labor. She's fully dilated to two for two hours. Now examined and found to be fully dilated. Left occipital anterior position, vertex 1 cm below the spine with plus cabot and no molding. So what is the appropriate management for this case? She is para one, two hours, right? Di fully dilated. So we need to offer her something now. And yes, it will be the trial of forceps. And is it in theater or in the room? With the left occipital anterior and one cm below the spine. One cm below the spine, this is a mid cavity delivery. So this should need, need to be done in theater. Okay, so would that be rotational or non-rotational delivery? Well done, yes. So the number three, 30 year old primary at 41 weeks of gestation had a neotomy for confirmed delay in the first stage of labor. So she is primary and she had already a neotomy but for confirmed delay, anyway, first stage of labor at 60 m dilated. She's contracting three times in 10. What is the action now? Okay, so you are going to increase the oxytocin. So the step after amniotomy that shall we increase the oxytocin now or not? We don't increase, okay, so we don't increase, or oh, sorry, we don't add oxytocin plus amniotomy in the same time, right? 
you sound it sounds like something wrong in that scenario, which is a mutiny for confirmed delay, right? But anyway, the patient had already a mutiny. Okay, what shall I do now? First of all, I look to your answers and I say, okay, that caesarean section is not an option at this stage. There is nothing considered, you know, for the management in this case as caesarean section. Okay, yes, vaginal examination should be after two hours and after the two hours vaginal examination, it is still we are at the same, okay, level, what we will do is we will commence oxytocin. Right? So what we will do, we'll just examine here in two hours time. Okay, so yes, so Dr. Bushra, she is... Dr. Ali, I believe that you are commenting on two, on the question number two, right? No, we are now discussing question number three, my dear. And in the question number three, we choose the answer J, right? Okay. Number four, vaginal examination at 1 p.m. when she, the primary had vaginal examination at 1 p.m. when she was found to be 6 cm dilated, left to occipital to posterior position, vertex 3 cm above the ischial spine with cabot 1 plus no molding. She's commenced to an oxytocin for confirmed delay in the first stage of labor. She's re-examined at 4 p.m. and found to be 7 cm dilated. Left to accept to posterior position. Vertex is 2 cm above the ischial spine with 2 plus cabot and 1 plus molding. So, Still high, right? So what shall I do now? With two plus cabot, this is a sign of when it comes early like this with 7 cm, okay? Of the cephalopelvic disproportion, right? Yes, that's why we will go for the cesarean section. Your comment, my dear Dr. Shah, for the previous question, that that's why I told you that the question was written, you know, there is some conflict in this question because it was a minutomy for confirmed delay. It should be a minutomy for suspected delay. That's it. Okay, so we solve it based on that. Otherwise, if a patient had already a minutomy and re-examined then two hours is still the same, we go for oxytocin. Right? Don't worry, they revise the questions in the exam many times. Okay, for me, it's the first time actually to go through these type of questions, but it's a good training. Right, okay, let's see. A 36 year old para one transferred to labor room from the community midwife unit at 8 cm dilated dilatation following spontaneous rupture of membrane which she found to have grade three meconium. On admission in the labor room, she had urged to push. On examination, the presenting part is crowning. The fetal heart is being 80 to 90 for four minutes. She does not deliver over the next two contractions. Okay, so. Consider the example partogram below that the record in the progression of labor in the multiparous woman. The partogram shows cervical dilatation in the first stage, the first eight hours of labor, okay? So the question here about the partogram, right? Okay, and this is one example of the WHO, the Unified WHO 
four hourly partogram, right? This is not the question 10, this is the question point 0.5 in the question 10, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, thank you. We have the case that transferred to labor room from the community midwife at 8 cm dilatation following spontaneous rupture of membrane, where she was found to have grade 3 meconium, right? Okay, on admission, the labor room, she had urged to push. On examination, presenting part is crowning. This is, you know, coming. The fetal heart has been 80 to 90 for four minutes. She does not deliver over the next two contractions. So what are you going to do? You're given a bit. This is crowning head, right? Correct, my friends? Yes. That's it. She is coming into labor. She is pushing. Head is already crowning. Okay, so just give an AB and that's it. Right. Good. So, excuse me, guys. And let's move to the next question. Yes. The next question for the example of the part to graph below that record the progression. We are halfway, I think. Record the progression in labor in multiparous women. Yes, Dr. Noha. Partograph shows cervical dilatation in the first eight hours of labor. According to the stops at the point marked by the green asterisk. Okay, so dear friends. I've been asked in the last session about the partograph, okay, the W specifically the WHO partograph. I know that many of you have been using this in the hospital, right? But some are not familiar with it. Maybe they use another version or they use uh, some local hospital, you know, um, partograph, right? So simply, what are we following for the exam? Simply because our college advised that we go for the WHO, the modified partogram, which is the four action line, right? Okay, what I expect to find in this partogram? One second, I'll try to make it. I know you will tell me I can't see anything, but here, okay, just an explanation, a little bit explanation about it, okay? And here, what shall I find in the exam? I should find in any partograph the registration number of the patient, okay, the name, age, date, parity, last semester period, the expected delivery date, the delivery at the time of the gestation age at the time of the coming to, to, to the delivery suite, okay? And rupture of membrane, ROM, at the time and date, okay? Labor duration, okay? And here is the fetal heart rate. Of course, here it will be recorded and they put a trick like this. For example, the when admission, we started from here the time okay and the fetal heart rate was 120 for example okay and then after that it was 130 then again when when we checked it was 120 and so on right okay so that's mean it's good if we find that the fetal heart rate drops that's require an emergency intervention right 
Anyway, so you will find that they point at any time, they do the examination, they record the time of the examination, and they record those findings, starting by the fetal heart rate. Then they also comment on Lycor, molding, right? Cervical dilatation, and they put blood, okay? And the descent as well, right? So for example, I have cervical dilatation at this time, okay, was six, okay? At this time was six, okay? And then after four hours, okay, I find it's again at six. What does this mean? What does this mean, my friends? Four and four and I'm in the same. This is suspect delay, okay? So if after, after two hours I came again to the examination, I still find it at six. So we have the action line. This is alert line, action line, and so on, right? So that's mean it's a time when you do action, right? Contractions, okay, will be given also here. So you will know if the patient had like this. Okay, so she, the patient had two in five. Then after, after some times, you assess contraction and you find that the intensity of the contraction is now getting more intense, right? So you will know after sometimes you find that the contraction now is minimal like this. So you give also a sign for the contraction. Oxytocin, if it's given, and there's a dose, it must be given there and written. Drug, any drug given, any IV fluids given. The blood pressure of the patient and the pulse pressure, temperature and the urine output. So all the component of the partograph is the examination. This is the frequent examination finding that you need to report at each time you examine the patient. Right? So I find it in the exam like this. One second, back to our file. Okay. I find it in the exam like this. What is this? It's just part from the partograph, not a complete part. Not a complete partograph. But this part, they ask you simply, okay, about what does this mean here? What is this? What is given there? Cervical dilatation in the first eight hours. How about the cervical dilatation? Are you happy with the cervical dilatation or there is any problem? Yes, she is in the first stage, of course. Still eight. Okay. Yes, through the eight hours. Yes. Okay. So what, what else you can see about the... Yes, in the yes, sure. Okay, so what's your answer? A similar question like this can come to the exam, so you should be able to answer. And it's easy, straightforward. There was only 2 cm progress over six hours. So we do have a delay in labor, right? How about the contraction? If they ask about the contraction in this part to graph, what can you see it here? Two only, contractions are two only, right? So inadequate contraction. So what is the action?
the uh, what's written here, my friend, is adequate contraction. So it's inadequate. It's not enough. It's only two in four. Okay. So we need to offer help to this patient. What type of help will we offer at the first stage of labor? Okay. So I'll ask you, my friend, is that normal progress? Dr. Nuria, is that a normal progress? No, it's not. So A and B both rejected. Is that adequate contractions? No, it's only two, right? No. So is that a delayed progress in first stage or this is a delayed progress in the second stage? What do you think? It's a delay in the first stage, that's it. That's why C is the correct answer. Okay, let's have another question on the part to graph. Maybe it will help you more, my friends. Despite an increase in the frequency and the strength of uterine contraction following administration of intravenous syntocinum, okay, there was no further dilatation in the cervix. So here he give you a mark about when the intravenous syntocinone started for this patient, right? Look to the contractions. What happened to the contractions in response? Increased, good. So despite of the increase of contraction, what happened to the dilatation? It's the same, right? So the patient, let's say at three o'clock, the patient at three o'clock, what was the cervical dilatation? Okay, so what happened at seven o'clock? What is the cervical dilatation now? Four. What happened at eight o'clock? Four. What happened at nine o'clock? Four, right? So what happened after? four hours from this time. Remains the same, okay. So if the patient, despite of the adequate contraction and giving intravenous syntocinone, this is after, this is after the syntocinone. This result, okay, of no cervical dilatation, I'm sorry, using the same color, so I will choose different color here, okay? After starting of the oxytocin, we do have the same dilatation, no progress. What you will do now? No, Dr. Kavita, she is having suspect delay, right? And then they started the and then confirm a delay and they started the oxytocin. For you in the exam, don't bother yourself about what has happened. This is your starting point when you think about the next step, the intravenous syntocinone. This is the master scene in this question, right? Starting the intravenous syntocinone. What happened after starting? Contractions increased, but still no dilatation, no further dilatation. We are still at four. Okay, so 
what is the next? He is asking you about action. Take an action, please, based on what happened. Caesarean section for non-progress of labor, right? Is that an indication to go for Caesarean section? Yes, of course, right? Okay, so good. What category is this Caesarean section of non-progress of labor? This is emergency Caesarean section, but what category? Cut two, well done, well done. Okay, so moving to the next question, which is, I think it's, inshallah, okay. The numbers of the question, don't mind the number of the question, okay. Looks like the file editor did not take care of this. Okay, 25 year old who is 40 weeks pregnant in her first pregnancy in the second stage of labor, she had an actively pushing for two hours and exhausted. CTG to a baseline of 150. Normal baseline variability, occasional acceleration, infrequent typical deceleration, contracting 3, 2, 4, and 10, vaginal examination, fully dilated cervix with the fetal head in the direct occipital anterior position, and the station 1 plus, which is the following most appropriate next management step. So our, our dear friend here, what is her situation? She's prying me and pushing two hours and exhausted. What shall I do now? Now I would offer instrumental delivery. This is one of the indication, right? Excellent, Dr. Kavita, we will help her. Okay, so we will help her with forceps or we are going to help her with vacuum. forceps for the exhausted mother. Yes. Okay, good. In 12 year old, who is 40 weeks pregnancy in her first pregnancy, second, 25, sorry, 25 years old in question 12, who is 40 week pregnant, pregnant in her first pregnancy, second stage of labor, been actively pushing for one hour. CTG show baseline of 180. One second, one second. This is the CTG. So in this CTG, what is that feature color? Red, excellent. Reduce the baseline variability, no acceleration and the frequent atypical variable deceleration. She is contracting three to four. Vaginal examination reveals fully dilated cervix with fetal head in direct occipital to anterior and the station plus one spine. Which of the following is the most appropriate next management step? Pathological CTG is not a contraindication for instrumental delivery, my friends. Please remember this fact based on the guideline, right? There are fetal, Indication, there are maternal indication, exhausted mother in the previous scenario with the indication for offering the instrumental delivery. At the moment, the indication for the instrumental vaginal delivery is the distress the fetus, right? So it will be an instrumental delivery in theater, right? Well done, you're answering very nicely, mashallah. So you are counseling 28 year old primary with a singleton pregnancy at the antenatal clinic at 38 weeks of regarding her options of delivery. Her clinical history has been normal. Okay, so my dear friend in the fetal monitoring, sorry, um, okay, but because I just have seen the fetal blood sampling, so I need to say something very important, okay? One second, here. 
in the FETAM monitoring guideline 2022. Nice guideline. No more fetal blood sampling. Any previous question or all the questions in your practice of question you might face and you find that the answer is fetal blood sampling, please remember that now proceed to delivery methods. Okay? Right? So, any answer with fetal blood sampling, proceed to delivery. Don't choose the fetal blood sampling anymore. Okay? And fetal blood sampling in the past, it was a method trying to buy some time. Okay? When you have um, a situation where maybe the patient will progress, maybe, maybe not. Okay? Yes. So, take the decision to deliver now, there's no more fetal blood sampling, okay? The fetal monitoring, yes, sure, I can send it to you guys on the group. Okay, so this is one thing. Another thing here, let's move to, to the next question and see. Yeah, I have also one question from Dr. Faiza, and she is asking about taking decision according to the CTG for the for categorization of cesarean section. Look, my dear, the categorization of cesarean section, it says cut one cesarean section when there is imminent risk for the mother and the fetus. Example, okay, like for example, baby has acidosis. Okay, abnormal CTG lead to acidosis. Do you think that I can say that this is not an imminent risk? Shall I wait with the acidosis or shall I proceed to delivery? It's a decision, okay, to deliver immediately or otherwise, okay, you will be seen in court. Right? Sure. So proceed with cut one cesarean section. Patient had placental abruption, cut one cesarean section. Patient had severe hemorrhage, cut one cesarean section. Patient had cord prolapse with, with suspicious CTG. Cut one cesarean section or cut two. With suspicious CTG and cord prolapse, both together equal cut one. Okay? Cord prolapse with normal CTG, because this is what came in your exam. Cord prolapse and normal CTG. That's make it cut two. Okay? So it's about situations. Some situations that you will find in the exam and you will... Decide based on the emergency. If there is imminent risk to the mother and fetus, cut one cesarean section. Okay? Delivery can be delayed one hour or one hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes exactly as per the NICE guideline. Okay, so we can say this is a cut two. The most famous indication for cut two cesarean section is non progress of labor. Right? Like the patient that we saw with her case and there was non-progress of labor, then okay, we need to take care for cesarean section, but not a cut one, it's a cut two, according to the availability of theater. And of course, and on the triage system, if I have another patient who is bleeding, okay, or she had abruption of the placenta, of course, we'll take the bleeding case or the abruption placenta case, and our case with non-progress of labor, she can wait a little bit, right? Up to 75 minutes. Okay, Dr. Fatima, thank you very much for your time. I think we have a few questions and we'll finish. Don't worry. Okay, so you are counseling a 28-year-old primary with singleton pregnancy and the antenatal clinic at, 20, at 38 weeks regarding the options of delivery. 
The clinical history has been normal so far and perceiving good fetal movement. She had a fetal fetus in the Kivalik presentation. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, so which one would be more wrong or incorrect than the other? I can tell you something, guys, okay? For the point of E and B, it will be according to actually what happened to the trial of delivery, right? For example, both can be correct. You know why? Because I can offer the woman a trial of induction of labor first, for example, by giving her um, the dinoprostone, okay? or give her a metoprostol one dose. And then after examination, six hours or even 12 hours, we don't have a progress. Baby is fine, mother is fine. Looks like she is favorable for induction. Can I repeat the dose? Or another thing, you have a patient with Bishop score seven. According to the new guideline, with the Bishop score seven, I can do amniotomy induction of liver by amniotomy. Okay, and then give an oxytocin drip, for example. Okay, so I started amniotomy and there is no contractions out there. I can add after the amniotomy, I can add the oxytocin, right? And see, amniotomy itself didn't help. So still, I can add something because mother is fine, baby is fine, everybody is fine. Is that correct? Okay. Another patient had received one method of induction. Okay. Again, it could be any method. And then after giving the, the, the medication or starting, she had complication either in herself or in the baby. Now, what shall I do if complication arised? Shall I continue on the induction or shall I go to the cesarean section? Yes, I would go to the cesarean section in this case. Okay, so I can argue that D is correct, E is correct. Right? How about B, when to offer induction of labor? the most obvious information with no doubt that it's wrong. That I will do it after no, not before the 41. So after the patient completed 41, I can discuss or can offer the induction. What only I can offer before that is what?
is the membrane soup. Yes. Okay. So B is the answer that is here for this question because this is the incorrect statement. Right? How about 14? 14 induction of labor should not be offered if. Okay, so which one is absolutely contraindication to the induction of labor? So again, you are confused between A and C. So we don't recommend the induction of labor for a patient who is having breach. We don't recommend it, okay? But which one is contraindicated? So yes, I agree with you that both can be chosen, but for C, this is suspicious CTG with a risk factor in the baby. Can I even think about induction? No, right? So it's about the grade of recommendation in the guideline. Okay, and you are now expert in part two examination and in reading guideline, and you understand that there is some recommendation when there is different in the recommendation level, right? Some will be offered, some will be considered. Some is absolute contraindicated, some are not absolute contraindicated. Some is just written that's not recommended, but you know that if a patient who is insisting on something, she might find an, a consultant who can agree on her request if the guideline give only, you know, a window to say that it could be risky or it's not recommended, but based on individual basis or whatever, okay? So it's not for you in this exam, in the part two exam, it's not for you to choose induction of labor as, as for, for breach cases. But for a consultant, they might, you know, have agreement with a woman for that. But, okay, this is not the case now. C is absolutely, you know, not acceptable because of that suspicious CTG with the severe FGR and reduced amniotic fluid. Okay, so this will be the answer. And... I think we have a few questions to go. It's like single bestanza questions. Are we okay to, to continue that, guys, or it's too long for you? Okay, so that's great. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for your precious time. So while counseling a low risk, Brimey, about planning her delivery, the following information should be given to her. What do you think? Home birth or midwifery unit, freestanding or alongside, not particularly suitable for her, or 
small increase in risk of adverse outcome to baby exists if she plans to deliver at home, or admission CTG will be performed if she is admitted to labor ward with suspected but not established labor. She must not ask for the cord to be cut later than five. Success rate of vaginal delivery in midwifery unit is due to timely higher rate of intervention. No. Okay, so which one are you going to give her? The piece of information that based on the guideline, a small increase risk in the adverse outcome to her baby exists if she delivers at home. Right? Good. Which of the following is recommended as a method of induction of labor? Okay, so the low dose mesoprostol or the dinoprostol intravaginal can be given. So answer C, well done. 32 year old the gravity 2 power 1 has been transferred to midwifery late care unit for lack of progress in labor at 4 cm. Her previous baby weighted 3 kg and normal delivery at 38. On admission, her observation normal and CTG reassuring midwife examined her and she diagnosed the complete breach presentation. And this is confirmed on a scan. So, scan is done already. Woman is very keen to have vaginal delivery and decision has been taken to allow labor to continue. After two hours, there is no progress in labor and CTG becomes suspicious. What is the most appropriate action? So they allow the woman for the vaginal delivery because she wanted that. But what shall I do now in this case? Situation is suspicious CTG. Yes, please advise A. Yes, correct. A is correct. Yes, well done. Sure, emergency cesarean section. Okay, my friends. So in 18, you have a 42 years old woman, 39 uh, weeks in gestation in her second pregnancy, having a, pri a prior emergency cesarean section for fetal death stress three years earlier. She's keen to give birth vaginally, but She's requesting induction of labor because concern regarding the increased risk of perinatal mortality associated with her age. What is the most appropriate method of induction to minimize risk of uterine rupture in labor? For a woman who had a previous cesarean section, what is the recommendation? Is it dinoprostol, mesoprostol, oxytocin, or mechanical method? So we can consider the mechanical method, right? Pharmacological methods are not allowed. Based on the, yes, this is based on the new NICE guideline. It's not very new now, but it's updated guideline and it's very concise and very useful for your exam as well. Low risk, 34 year old woman in her second pregnancy admitted in spontaneous labor at 39 weeks of gestation. Cervix is effaced and 5 cm dilated with membrane intact. On admission, Dr. Fatima, the NICE guideline is updated, my dear. On admission, she is examined again four hours later and 6 cm dilated. She consents to artificial rupture of membrane Lycor is clear. What is the most appropriate method of fetal monitoring? So we have low risk, okay? Admitted at term 39. Cervix is 5 cm and they phased, okay? And ARM is done. Lycor clear. So what you need? You need to go for CTG or intermittent auscultation. Yes, well done. It's intermittent auscultation. What is the lower limit of gestational age for use of vacuum? The lower age is now 32. Yes, well done. And use it with caution until 76. Yes, well done. Okay. 
well done, my friends. I am impressed today with your uh, performance, mashallah. Good luck in your study and your exam. Okay, tomorrow in our group, um, we said that we are going to have quizzes. We can have some dance live sessions. It's not very regular, but at least, okay, we will be online with you to cover any doubt or any questions questions we can post useful videos as well okay so just follow us in the group okay and please take care of yourself yes my dear i was just said sorry i need to explain one one point before we go for the question number 20 the lower limit to use is 32 okay but i can use it with caution up to 36 no confusion here, okay? Thank you very much, my friends. And good luck, okay? Tomorrow, um, our moderator, Dr. Madenji, she is going to post some questions on the complication of labor for you and the group. Okay, a quiz also, a group quiz. So please uh, follow that and be prepared for the complication of labor. Thank you very much.